So, it is down to you, and it is down to me. In that case, I challenge you to a battle of wits. To the death? I accept. Then pour the apple juice. Inhale, but do not touch. I smell nothing. What you do not smell is called Iocane powder. It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly into liquid, and is among the more deadlier poisons known to man. Choose your cup. Why, it's so obvious. We're clearly acting out that scene from the princess. What in the world could that be? What? Wait, I, I don't see anything. Just for good measure. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> uh, and, and now we drink. I from my glass and you from yours. You guessed wrong. Ha! That's what you think. Clearly I couldn't choose any of these glasses. And so while your back was turned, I slipped Nightlock Berries into the cups. We're both dead! Wait, what? Nightlock Berries have nothing to do with this. The Hunger Games isn't even, like, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Lauren. And I'm Kai. And welcome to the Theoretical YouTube channel, your center for poison control. Just as long as they don't really exist. And as you've probably guessed, today we're going to be counting down our top 10 fictional poisons. We have meticulously ranked them in order using three different categories. How effective the poison is. How large a role it plays in the overall story. And how unique it is. Symptoms, methods of administration, and overall coolness all factor in here. So without further ado, let's see if we can survive this episode. Number 10, the Blue Shadow Virus from Star Wars The Clone Wars. The Blue Shadow Virus is a plague that swept through the galaxy far, far away a long time ago. Thousands of years before the Clone Wars, the virus would infect the water and kill entire systems. Fortunately, it was eradicated and that seemed like the end of the virus forever until Dr. Nuvo Vindi manufactured a new form of the virus in an attempt to create a Jedi-proof weapon. The new Blue Shadow Virus is able to be transmitted through air, making it a much deadlier version of the plague. Vindi's plan was to create bombs filled with the poison and drop them on various systems throughout the galaxy. This, however, was stopped by Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Padme Amidala, and pretty easily too. Which is exactly why it's number 10 on our list, because it's just a generic disease that's used once in the series and then never brought up again. Number 9, Vorpint Venom from the How to Train Your Dragon books. The venomous Vorpint first appeared in the third book, How to Speak Dragonese, where it's described as a very small and very poisonous bog dragon. It stings either hiccup or fish legs in a hot air balloon chase don't ask, and then never appears again, except for in this epilogue picture thing where it says, I don't like happy endings. They are too neat, too nice. I like a little spice in my stories. One book later, Fishlegs comes down with an unknown illness presumed to be Vorpentitis, so Hiccup has to set off for a quest to America and retrieve the only known cure. A potato. But Fishlegs never had Vorpentitis, and it is revealed that Hiccup was the one who had been stung all along. But luckily, Hiccup gets shot with an arrow that had been previously lodged in a potato and still had some juices on it, so he lives. And apparently is now not only immune to Vorpin Venom, but also all poisons known to man. Cause, you know, potatoes. Anyway, while this poison is fun and all, it never really killed anyone in the book, had a ridiculously easy cure by today's standards, and actually gave Hiccup superpowers? It's an occupational hazard. Also, most people only care about the movies and never read the books. So, moving on. Number eight, the Aracoinia Flower from the Ranger's Apprentice series. In case any of you guys don't know, the Ranger's Apprentice is a series of books by John Flanagan that tell the story of a young man named Will as he learns to be a ranger from his master Halt. In the ninth installment to the series, which is fittingly called Halt's Peril, the two men, along with a knight named Horus, are on a mission tracking down a man named Tennyson, who's basically the leader of a cult. However, on this mission, Halt is scraped by a poisoned arrow. Initially, he brushes it off as merely a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. But as the symptoms start to kick in, Will has to leave to find the only doctor that could cure him. When he returns, the doctor says that this is a very special type of poison. This poison comes from one of two flowers, which are impossible to tell the difference between after they've been ground up. 
They also have two different antidotes, which if you use the wrong one, it only starts to kill you faster. Can I stop? Stop? Oh, now I can relax. They eventually solved the problem by taking the man who shot Halt as prisoner and stabbing him with his own arrow. After that, he was pretty eager to tell them the type of antidote to use. The reason this poison made it onto the list is because of the two cures. Even if you know what kind of poison it is and you know what antidote to use, you still have a 50-50 chance whether you're going to die or not. Number seven, Iocane Powder from The Princess Bride. All right, so everyone pretty much recognizes this one. And if you don't, that intro must have been super confusing for you. Basically, Iocane Powder is a deadly substance that dissolves instantly in liquid. It's also undetectable since you can neither smell nor taste it. It kills Mancini in an incredibly fast acting way. So if there is a cure, it would have had to have been administered immediately. Iocane Powder is also an icon of the movie. So it scores highly in the story category as well. But this poison starts to lose points when you think about how easily Wesley was able to outsmart his opponent. They were both poisoned. I spent the last few years building up an immunity to Iocane powder. I mean, sure, people can build up immunities to deadly substances, but doesn't that detract from their effectiveness? Technically, 50% of Iocane powder victims that we see on screen survive with absolutely zero consequences. It's incredibly skewed data, but it's something worth considering. The poison itself is also pretty generic. It's, it's just powder, guys. Literally anything else would have been either more interesting or unique. A time-honored classic for sure, but ultimately not the flashiest tool in the old poison bag. Number six, Nightlock Berries from The Hunger Games. Yeah. Well, our sister has been begging us to put something Hunger Games related on this channel since the very beginning. So here we go. Every victim who actually ingests a Nightlock Berry dies. And that's a grand total of one. Katniss and Peter are stopped at the last moment before they kill themselves. Gale tries to take his pill and then realizes he gave it to Peta. None of the other soldiers even attempt to take their dose. The old game master, Seneca Crane, is given a choice to either eat a pile of Nightlock Berries or starve to death. He chooses to just stop breathing. Sure, I, I guess that solves the problem. So really, the only person to actually ingest Nightlock Berries in the entire series was Foxface, and yeah, she's dead. Nightlock is fast acting and incurably deadly. It just so happens that we don't get to see it used very often, despite its reputation in Pan Am. That's Nightlock, Peter! You'll be dead in a minute! Nightlock also plays an incredibly important role in the Hunger Games franchise. The climax of the entire first book is the suicide attempt that Katniss eventually persuades Peta into. Therefore, Nightlock Berry has kind of become a symbol of the revolution. Not like mocking J levels of symbolism, but you know, enough. After that, Nightlock pills are a recurring item in later books. Similar in function to the cyanide pills from World War II, soldiers could choose to kill themselves rather than give up information should they be captured. Overall, not the most creative poison, it's just berries, but still a very effective one. Number five, Hebanon from Hamlet. If you don't know the story of Hamlet, just picture the Lion King, but without all the lions. Also, it's written in Shakespearean English. Now, in the play, Hamlet's father is not thrown into a ravine filled with a stampede of wildebeest. Although I agree that would have been cool, it was kind of impractical for the stages that this play was being performed on. But I'm sure old Bill considered it in his first draft. Anyway, Hamlet's uncle killed his father by, um, pouring a vial of poison into his ear. Wait, hold on a minute. Upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed Hebona in a vial, and the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver, coarse and crust all my sweet body. Thus I sleeping my brother's hand, the life crown of queen, and life dispassion. Perfections on my head. Makes sense. So basically, his brother snuck up on him in his garden, poured a vial of poison in his ear, then all of a sudden his blood curdled and his skin was covered in a scaly crust. Huh. The reason this was put at number 5 is not for its creativity, except for that ear thing. That's kind of weird. Kind of for its effectiveness, 100% but mostly for its impact on the story. Without Hebanon, the entire story of Hamlet would not have happened. He would never have ran away, he would never have met Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and then he would never have returned to defeat his uncle. 
or died. But you know, tragedy. Number four, the poison apple from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This is probably one of the most well-known poisons of all time. Cause come on, who doesn't know Snow White and the famous ending with the poison apple? It's not for you, it's for Snow White. It's the climax of the movie, and it's a shocking twist to see the main character actually die. And let's not forget that Snow White set the groundwork for all animated feature-length films... ever. Snow White wouldn't necessarily be different without the poisoned apple. The queen could have given her any poison, but Snow White is such a kind, good-hearted person that she expects that anyone giving her an apple would never try to harm her. And everyone knows that apples are the most innocent fruits. Right? So when Snow White bit the apple and died, it became an iconic moment in film history. It's also a really effective poison. After the Huntsman failed her, the evil queen decided to go with the most surefire way she knows she can kill Snow White. It just so happens that true love can heal anything in Disney. And this is why it received the ranking that it did. Because it's effective at its job, it was a unique way to kill someone back then, and it's widely regarded as one of the most influential poisons in film history. Number three, The Strangler from Game of Thrones. For those of you who haven't seen or read Game of Thrones, The Strangler is the poison that killed King Joffrey on his wedding night to Marjorie Tyrell, often referred to as the Purple Wedding. Because I guess Red Wedding was taken? Anyway, The Strangler was used in one of the most complicated murder plots I've ever heard of, and I'm counting the Dark Knight here. So it starts off with Peter Baelish paying Dantos Hollard to give Sansa a necklace where one of the gems is secretly a crystallized form of the Strangler that will dissolve in liquid. Then Sansa has to wear that necklace without knowing what it is to the wedding. Then Olena Tyrell compliments Sansa on her necklace and readjusts it, secretly stealing the crystal without anybody noticing. Because that's not difficult at all. Anyway, so Elena then has to discreetly slip the crystal into Joffrey's wand without anyone noticing. So she gets someone to rig a giant pie with pigeons that explode on impact. <laughs> then Joffrey just has to drink from the glass that Elena poisoned, and bada bing bada boom, one of the most hated Game of Thrones characters sits on the big iron throne in the sky. Oh, also, Joffrey just happened to make Tyrion his cupbearer that night, so the whole thing gets blamed on him and they never look for any other suspects. That's not convenient, right? So yeah, the way the Strangler is used in the series is like a deadly game of hot potato where only one person knows that they're playing. But besides the overcomplicated way that the Strangler eventually found its way to its intended victim, once it got there, it had devastating results. Joffrey's light coughing suddenly becomes severe and his throat constricts so that he can no longer breathe. The Boy King is strangled to death mere minutes after being poisoned by his wife's grandmother because he treated his ex-girlfriend like dirt. And I thought my family was complicated. Anyway, The Strangler earns high points for effectiveness, role in the story, and originality, earning it the bronze medal for its purple performance. Number two, Joker Venom from Batman. Also known as Smilex, Smilex, Joker Toxin, Joker Gas, Laughing Gas, or a ton of other variations of the same name, the Joker administers this toxin in order to both torture and dispose of his victims. Sometimes he even uses the flower on his lapel to do it. The Venom kills its victim after basically playing with it first. Anyone unfortunate enough to come into contact with the stuff will begin uncontrollably laughing. Then their face physically pulls back into a grotesque grin as they laugh themselves off into the beyond. Tee hee, tee hee. The smile is probably the creepiest part as it's just so unnatural and disturbing. It actually resembles the real life effects of Lockjaw. All the more reason to get your tetanus shot, guys. Was I tricked into making a PSA? There is an antidote to the poison, but more often than not, it's only used on the non-deadly variety of the venom. Not to mention that the non-deadly version also can cause insanity. This poison scores high in all three categories. The effectiveness of the stuff is... admirable? And the non-deadly strain is also equally quite horrible. It's one of the most iconic Joker methods of torture, and certainly it haunts nightmares across several generations. And of course, since it's coming from the Joker, it's also creative and unique. It may just be a gas, but it certainly earns a high-ranking place on this list. Number one, the dip from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 
I know it's not one of the most well-known poisons in history, because it's definitely no poisoned apple or Smilex. It's not as effective at killing people as something like Nightlock or the Strangler, because the characters kind of just get away from it. But where the dip excels is in its uniqueness. Let me just describe to you the dip. It's a mixture between turpentine, acetone, and benzene. Turpentine, acetone, benzene. He calls it the dip. Therefore, the most effective way to kill a tune. Although the main characters are able to just slip away from it, the tunes that actually come in contact are dissolved immediately. So it's not the most important poison ever, and it's not too hard to keep away from but it is by far the most unique and creative poison on this list. And that's why it's number one. We survived! So that's our list of the top 10 fictional poisons. And if you disagree with any of our selections, why don't you tell us about it in the comment section down below? While you're down there, why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you get notifications every time we put out new content. For our cool top 10 list, why don't you click the box right here, and we'll catch you next time. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going!